Holy f Simone Biles is the greatest gymnast of all time. She's magnificent, powerful, amazing, the absolute goat. And my wife and I have been obsessed with watching all her routines as the Tokyo Olympics approach. The entire Olympic team is amazing, as are all the women who went to the trials but weren't selected, as are all NCAA gymnasts, as- Yes, I'm gonna make this video about physics, not just standing Simone Biles. No, I am not re-watching her beam routine without you. I'm re-watching her floor. As a non-gymnast and non-athlete in general, I have no idea what's going on and really just love the jumps and flips that seem to defy gravity. But do they actually defy gravity? Is Simone Biles defying physics or using it as intended? In this video, I'm going to break down all of her skills on floor from a physics perspective using kinematic equations to determine her initial takeoff velocity, the maximum height her center of mass reaches, and her flipping and twisting rotational velocities for each jump. Welcome to Bad Astra. A jump has several parts. There's the takeoff, the upward motion, the peak, where the velocity and motion switches from upwards to downwards, and the landing. While the person or object is off of the ground, the only force acting on them is gravity, so they are in free fall. This means that while the jumper is airborne, their acceleration is constant at about 9.8 meters per second in the downward direction. Other planets have different gravitational pulls, but until the Olympics is held on the moon or another extraterrestrial body, we're going with Earth's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. One really cool thing about objects in free fall is that their horizontal motion and vertical motion are perpendicular and therefore don't affect each other at all. So the amount Simone Biles travels in the horizontal direction doesn't actually impact the maximum height she gets. Because of this, I can completely ignore all of Biles' horizontal motion and only look at her vertical motion. In all of these calculations, we will only be taking into account Simone Biles' vertical motion. So moving across the floor doesn't really matter. I'm only going to be focusing on her vertical motion and completely ignoring her horizontal motion for two reasons. One, only her vertical motion actually matters in terms of difficulty points and sheer wow of it all. And two, because the camera is moving and keeps switching angles, it's actually a lot harder than I initially thought to get the overall amount she travels on each move in a horizontal direction. We'll be using a kinematic equation to figure out the initial vertical velocity Simone Biles has when starting each of her jumps. Kinematic equations is just a fancy way of saying all the cool stuff we can calculate when acceleration is constant. These are great for objects in free fall, like a thrown ball or a jumping human, because the acceleration caused by Earth's gravity is constant. There are four kinematic equations, but we only need this one for now. Ignore the others, they didn't make the team. Total change in position, or delta x, is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. I could go over the mathematical proof, but that involves calculus, and we both just want to get to Simone Biles' leaping flippies, so just trust me and every high school physics teacher ever that this equation is accurate. I'm about to get into some detailed math, so let's do a quick costume change. Much better. Now, let's get into it. Let's start by doing what we can to make the equation easier. 
Because Simone Biles begins and ends all of her moves on the floor, we can treat her change in vertical position as zero. I love making things zero. Since she's technically in free fall while airborne, her only vertical acceleration is due to gravity. Earth's gravity accelerates all objects at around 9.8 meters per second, regardless of mass, and we're ignoring air resistance because Simone Biles is aerodynamic enough for air resistance to not matter. Let's make that negative 9.8 meters per second, since the acceleration is downwards. We could technically make the down direction positive and the up direction negative, as long as the opposite directions have different signs, but that's confusing and this video is already silly enough. So Simone Biles leaps off the ground with an initial positive or up velocity and is accelerated back downwards by Earth's gravity. We are trying to solve for that initial up velocity. So let's move this term to the other side of the equal sign and get it on its own. Now we have this annoying time attached to it, but on the other side, we see time as well, specifically time squared. Since there are time terms on both sides of the equal sign, we get to cancel them out. I love canceling terms. Remember that time squared means time multiplied by time, and we can only cancel one of those. So, Biles' initial up velocity equals one half times 9.8, our acceleration, times the time Biles is airborne, which means all we need is the amount of time Biles is airborne on each skill to calculate her initial upwards velocity. Using this same equation, we can also determine the maximum height Biles reaches in all of our skills. One really cool feature of free fall or projectile motion is that the motion is symmetric. This means that the front half of the motion looks exactly like the back half. If you throw a ball, its upward motion and its downward motion look exactly the same. You could basically be playing the clip in reverse. For this calculation, we'll only be looking at the back half of her jumps or the part between reaching her maximum height and falling back to the floor. Since Biles landing on the floor puts her center of mass at position zero, we can say her change in vertical position during the back half of her jump is the maximum height her center of mass reaches. This calculation doesn't follow any specific body part, which would be complicated since she's twisting and flipping, but rather how high up her body as a whole gets. Another reason we only want to look at the second half of each move is that at the top of her jump, her vertical motion goes from up to down. This is important because it means that for an instantaneous moment, her velocity is zero. When we choose to start at this velocity equals zero moment, we get to cancel out the initial velocity term. I love canceling terms! So the maximum height of Biles' moves is equal to half of her acceleration, which is negative 9.8 meters per second on Earth, times half of the time she was airborne, remember we only care about the back half of her jumps, squared. Now, Biles' difficulty points don't come from her air time or her maximum height. They come from her flips and twists. A twist is a spin around a vertical axis, like this. A flip is a head-over-heels rotation around a horizontal axis, like this. These flips and twists rely on rotational velocity, which we can calculate by dividing the amount her body turns by the time she's in the air. Let's get into Simone Biles' skills. All of these calculations can be done simply by knowing each move and the time Biles is airborne. I used the video of her Olympic trials day one floor routine and some free motion capture software to collect all of these times, so please allow for a slight margin of error in the data. Simone Biles' first move is the Biles 2, or a triple twisting double tuck. This skill is rated as J, which in technical terms means literally the most difficult move in artistic gymnastics history. This is where she jumps up, flips twice while twisting three times and lands on her feet because she's truly the greatest gymnast in history. 
I measured her time airborne as 1.21 seconds. So let's plug and chug. We put that number into the equation for initial upwards velocity and get 5.9 meters per second, or 13.3 miles per hour. That's really fast. Like, four and a half minute mile fast, but upwards. Her maximum height is 1.794 meters, or 5.89 feet high. For reference, Simone Biles is 4'8", or 4.67 feet tall. So the height Biles reaches is around one and a quarter times her own height. That's so freaking high. She could leapfrog herself with over a foot to spare. She's so amazing. While she's jumping higher than should be possible, she's also flipping twice, or 720 degrees, which makes her flipping angular velocity 5.95 degrees per second. Her twisting angular velocity is 1,080 degrees in 1.21 seconds, or 893 degrees per second, because she's truly superhuman. Biles' next tumbling pass is the Biles 1, or a double layout with a half twist. This move involves far less rotation, but is difficult due to the full layout. The balance beam situation, my source for all of these move breakdowns, and an excellent source for gymnastics information for non-athletes who only get obsessed for a few months every four years, remarks that this skill, while only G-rated and theoretically easier than the same move with a full twist, took 20 years later to be developed because of the sheer difficulty of controlling that late one-half turn and the forward landing, which isn't reflective in the comparative valuation. It's a feat that only Biles has mastered so far. The balance beam situation's petty commentary and information is amazing, and I love it. Right, physics. For the Biles one, I measured an airtime of 0.96 seconds, which works out to a lower initial velocity of 4.704 meters per second, or 10.52 miles per hour, which is still pretty fast. Biles' maximum height was 1.13 meters, or 3.7 feet, which means she's not leapfrogging herself on this one, but still clearing most children. Her flipping rotational velocity is 750 degrees per second, which in a layout is super fast given the added torque of a fully extended body, and the twisting rotational velocity is down at 188 degrees per second. I'll just trust Spencer Barnes that this is extra hard because I can barely do a handstand on a good day. Biles also combines this move with a stag jump, but that's an A-level move only used for combination points, so let's skip it. Time for some dance elements. You know, the boring stuff gymnasts have to do between the leaping flippies, because it's artistic gymnastics, I guess. Seriously, if you want to see a gymnast dance well, just watch Rhythmic Gymnastics, the ice dancing of the Summer Olympics. But actually, if you're not already binging Rhythmic Gymnastics, get on it because it's beautiful. Right, Simone Biles' switch leap. It's a D-level dance move where she spends 0.668 seconds in the air after launching with an initial upwards velocity of 3.3 meters per second, or 7.3 miles per hour, hits a maximum height of 0.55 meters, or 1.8 feet, and hits a split in the air while twisting at 539 degrees per second. For the Wolf Triple Turn, which Spencer correctly points out is not nice to look at, but is a D-level skill, so sure, get those difficulty points, Queen. Biles takes 1.919 seconds to go around three times, so her twisting rotational velocity is 563 degrees per second. Take all of these rotation numbers with a grain of salt, since I'm assuming exactly 360 degrees times the listed number of turns. If Biles gets almost all the way around or over rotates a tad, the numbers will be close but not exact. And with the moving camera and no unit circle drawn under her, I'm only eyeballing it and thinking, sure, looks great, let's get back to the cool stuff. Seriously, 
Why are cutesy personality dance moves and specific dance elements required in women's gymnastics? Then again, there's like a 10% chance I actually would try watching men's gymnastics if their floor routines had music, sparkly outfits, and the guys smiled more. Given that I do get very into men's figure skating as well as women's in pairs and ice dance at the Winter Olympics. Yeah, okay, the dancing is fun. Ooh, yay, a double flippy. Biles' next move is a front layout with a single twist through to a mukina, or a full twisting double tuck. The front layout has a takeoff velocity of 3 meters per second, or 6.9 miles per hour, and flipping and twisting rotational velocities of around 575 degrees per second each. She reaches a max height about half a meter, or 1.6 feet. The mukina is wild. Bios has a hang time of 1.042 seconds, which means a takeoff velocity of 5.1 meters per second, or 11.4 miles per hour, a maximum height of 1.33 meters, or 4.36 feet, means she's four inches away from leapfrogging herself again. Her flipping rotational velocity reaches 691 degrees per second, and her twisting rotational velocity hits 345 degrees per second as a combination of C and E level skills, after already doing two tumbling passes. The power, the stamina, just wow. Okay, good. We have a couple dance moves to give me time to retrieve my jaw from the floor. A switch leap with a 2.7 meters per second initial velocity and a max height of a third of a meter or just over a foot. But she hits a split, so her effective height off the floor is a lot higher than her change in center of mass. It's a pretty B-level dance move that gives her time to catch her breath. The split leap one and a half turn, which as a D-level dance skill counts for the same as a double pike tumbling pass. The more I read about the scoring of gymnastics, the more confused and angry I get is actually where Biles hits her second highest twisting rotational velocity of 864 degrees per second. She has an initial takeoff velocity of around three meters per second or 6.9 miles per hour, reaches a maximum height of about half a meter or a foot and a half and yes, back to the tumbling for her fourth and final pass. Biles ends her routine with a syllabus or a double twisting double tuck. Even though it's her final pass, she still achieves airtime of over a second, taking off with an initial velocity of 5.3 meters per second, or 11.9 miles per hour. Her flipping and twisting rotational velocities are both 664 degrees per second, since she turns twice around both axes in the same amount of time. She hits a maximum height of 1.4 meters, or 4.7 feet fully leapfrogging herself a second time this routine because at this point, why not? Now that we have a good understanding of the physics of Simone Biles' routine, let's try it out myself. Theoretical physics is way harder than applied physics, right? Whew. Okay, so obviously I don't have a spring floor, uh, but we're gonna be doing this on a soft surface, which is probably for the best. Uh, Eris is going to be here helping me spot, and Cece's also here <laughs> because we couldn't get her to stay out of frame. <laughs> Let's try this. The first miles, or the one we just saw is the first pass, and the first skill that was named after her, we'll see it in the second pass. In an unusual turn of events, the commentator is assisting with the wolf triple turn. <laughs> this is 
is not loud what? in her qualifier. However, we have not listened to the rules thus far, and we are not about to start now. And that was a successful wolf triple turn. How do you think that went? Uh, I, I think that went pretty good. Uh, there were some hiccups anytime I tried to do any actual gymnastics or dancing, but other than that, you know, I am glad you're feeling confident I after that pitiful display. That's it, just rude. You know, if you had fun, you won. <laughs> the floor routine just had too many rotations. I might do better on beam. Astronaut! Astra, Astra, to the stars, to the stars.